What is up guys, it's Volka and welcome to a new build guide video. Today we have the Multshot Flurry Marksman, uh, which is a really fast uh, monolith farmer build and also has really good single target DPS, so really nice for bossing and farming. Uh, it's an endgame build, uh, this one, and relies on gear to get good, good DPS, so it's definitely not, not like a starter build and um, you need to have some experience with the game uh, before you start playing this build, uh, so you know what to do with the gears and everything. And um, uh, it's mostly a glass cannon build, this one, so uh, basically our defensive layers are uh, max glancing blow, some decent armor, and uh, we get the guaranteed dodges from the silver shrouds, so and, uh, you can also go ravenous voids uh, if you have those, but m mostly we are relying on the DPS and uh, the evasive playstyle for tankiness. And as you can see from the gameplay here, we're doing uh, about 500 corruption, a bit more, and uh, with some some modifiers, uh, we, ha we had uh, in the last echo we had a couple increased HP and uh, uh, some damage, and this one has about the same. So this is um, uh, just a basic gameplay. We're basically skipping most of the enemies. So uh, you know, when before you get to the objective, you just run, and uh, you can se self cast the multi shot uh, instead of channeling. And uh, when we actually wanna do our do our DPS, then we start to channel and. Uh, uh, kind of li lining up the enemies, you know, uh, try, to hit, try to hit all the enemies at once. And um, we are using shotgun on this build for multi shot, so uh, to get the big bossing damage. And um, so, as you can see here, I, I'm going close to the boss and uh, for big damage, and even tanking some avalanche boulders to show. Uh, so, we can actually tank something as well. And some more gameplay here. So, uh, this is the uh, same corruption, about 500, and uh, we have two increased HP modifiers with damage. and. Um, also glancing blow on top, so pretty tanky, pretty tanky echo. And as you can see, I'm just using the self-cast multi-shot for uh, to get haste and uh, keep up our ancient flight buff. Um, and basically skipping most of the enemies. And th then we get to the objective here, and um, uh, I position myself so I can I can hit all the enemies. And um, even even with the shotgun, we we still have nice uh, nice damage on range. And you can also not use shotgun if you want, uh, but um, it basically triples our DPS for uh, for single target if you, if we are close to enemies. So feels very good, uh, very high high uh, single target DPS. And um, we also have really a nice health on hit on this build, and also health on crit. So we hit very very fast, especially if you use the shot shotgunning because we hit many times. Uh, so basically we have very nice sustain on the build, even though we don't have a, a leech or a region. And uh, as, as you can see, really nice damage, even with the uh, super tanky modifiers. Uh, no, not not having any problems, basically. And then on, on this Echo, we have the same modifiers as before, uh, but, but the enemy types are gonna be much, much, much harder. So this is pretty much like the worst scenario for uh, uh, that you can expect in High Corruption. So we have bad modifiers, very tanky, and also some, some uh, extra damage, uh, more than the last one. And uh, as you can see here pretty soon, we're gonna encounter the uh, one of the hardest enemy types in the game. So this is the matron, matron enemy type, and um, some gorgons uh, as well. So do a lot of damage. We, we can face tank pretty nicely here, even though I'm like uh, uh, missing a lot of tankiness from the gear. I don't have ravenous voids, for example. Uh, my, my HP is uh, a bit on the lower side. Um, but yeah, we, we can. I, I went to like 10 HP there, <laughs> as you saw. Uh, but we we uh, sustain really fast. Uh, we still uh, managed to go through that. So this is like a pr pretty much like the worst uh, worst case scenario for uh, for the echo gaming. Um, but as you can see, uh, we we still managed it, and you can make it. This um, th there's like a lot of room for improvement on the build uh, for both DPS, and uh, you can increase the tankiness as well uh, with the ravenous void and. Um, and I, I'm actually not even resistance capped uh, at the moment, so I have like 40 fires also. So just just to keep uh, keep that in mind. And then the actual echo objective, very very simple, no, not 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 too much uh, issue there. Uh, just finishing it out, you know. But the, but, but the enemy types are really important. So so sometimes you might get a huge spike in difficulty just because of the uh, type of enemy you are fighting. M mostly the the hardest ones are the matrons uh, for this build. You can also try to not use shotgun, uh, so you have uh, a bit of a safer place though. And here we have D4 Lightest Arbor to showcase the uh, bossing DPS single target. Pretty good uh, test for uh, for that type of testing, because it's basically a uh, boss that uh, completely uh, is standing still, and you can just uh, uh, test your DPS very easily. So as you can see, really nice, really nice uh, bossing DPS. We also get a huge uh, buff for flurry uh, against rares and bosses. 
So e e even the actual flurry does a lot of damage. As, as you can see, there I'm using a silver shout um, to take no damage from the from the cone attack, uh, completely just dodging that. And then then you can also use shift like this, uh, go through the beam because shift has in in vulnerability. So very very fast, and you can you can pump this up, uh, pump this up if you want with better gears. Alright, and then for the skills, passives and gear, next, so uh, starting with multi-shot here. Um, so so we, we are going for the for the uh, proking playstyle with the multi-shot, so we're mostly going to be channeling uh, with Flurry to proc the multi-shot, and you can, um, every now and then, you can also use multi-shot uh, as a, like a self-casting, um, uh, like a d direct multi-shot, just to um, get haste and... Um, stun some enemies while you're moving through the echo but the ma mana cost is going to be very very high so uh, it is a uh, 30 mana cost uh, to shoot the multi shot yourself so that that is one one reason we are why we are going for the uh, uh, going for the auto firing and proking uh, with the flurry and also we, we get more damage this way as well so so we, we this is basically travel point and 55% uh, more damage here basically and um and at attack speed uh, less attack speed doesn't matter for us because because we are uh proking the multi shot and then then tr travel points free free armor shed chance and then auto fire uh with flurry so 5% or auto fire some increased stun chance and then then uh, these ones uh so, so these points basically depend how, how many you can have here uh depends on the uh, plus the multi shot you have on your helmet. So if you have no no plus the multi shot, you will have only one point here. But um, uh, as this planner has the uh, 20, 23, 23 uh, uh, multi shot level, so we have the extra points to put here. And you always want to max these out: this hit damage versus slowed target, so 60% more damage versus slowed. And you you also must have a um, source for slow. So usually we use the blessing because um, uh, we don't need crit avoidance on this build. So um uh, and this give me gi give us more arrows so plus four arrows um, and more mana cost which doesn't matter because we are proking and then the shotgun node here you can also not use this if you feel like it um uh, basically the, we, we have 15 arrows on this build uh for multi shot so uh this is basically triple damage because w each of the arrows is 20 percent uh damage value uh, instead of you know uh instead of the usual if, if you are not shotgunning uh, of course one arrow is 100 percent if you're not shot shotgunning uh, but uh, so with five arrows we get the same damage as um without shotgun and uh so 15 arrows triple damage but uh you, you can be a bit safer um in the echo so if you have some hard enemies hard modifiers you could also not use this uh, so you can be at a uh, very high range and have like a sniping play style so uh, so you don't lose the damage if you are very, very far away, but f especially for bosses, uh, you always want to use this. And uh, recently, I've been only using uh, using the shotgunning because it's very, very, very strong. And then these points, some attack speed, basically travel points, and uh, you always want to max this out. This, this is uh, this Pierce uh, Pierce node. So uh, without this, we won't uh, pierce any enemies with multishot. So you have to have to have the Pierce. Um, I would recommend going for the for the maximum. So because it's um, it's very strong basically more aoe in a way because uh, you have to you can shoot through the backs of enemies and then these are just uh, double shooting um, double shot with multi shot so uh, every eight attacks is a double shot but this one uh, redu reduces it to four attacks so every four attacks uh, is a double shot and this also works for the for the proc uh, proc with flurry so we get the double shot every four procs basically all right, and then for a flurry. So uh, we basically use this as a, you know, like I said, proking tool, and also uh, the flurry itself is going to do damage as well. So uh, these travel points, also the attack speed is very, very nice for flurry. So flurry actually scales super well with attack speed because, of course, more uh, like a faster flurry means more multi shots as well. So three, three attack speed points to get to this one. So this makes flurry a channeled ability. Um, uh, so we we want to get this one. So this is just travel points, two points. Uh, so you get some physical resistance and elemental res while you are uh, channeling. Uh, not very meaningful, but you can you know it's still basically free resistance if you don't have a uh, uh, res capped otherwise. And then this one. Uh, so every sixth arrow is re replaced with multi shot. Uh, so this makes us shoot many multi shots with uh, flurry uh, combined with the five percent auto fire as well. So that's a uh, uh, like combination of co combination of things and also the double shot as I says as I said works for this as well so and then this one 15% arrow frequency so basically kind of like free attack speed pretty much 
uh, always get this one you could always go, go also go for this one but um, uh, since we are going to be moving basically every two seconds even if we are channeling so this is pretty useless because it's uh, more damage for each second uh, you have channeled so uh, this wouldn't give us much at all so basically that's why I'm not uh, using this one and then for for uh, for these points this is travel points they don't do anything for us since since uh, we don't leech and again travel point uh, even though this one actually adds something so plus for uh, health on hit but but very small but uh, the reason we go go this way is for the uh, plus two mana when uh, when you're hitting enemies so basically mana on hit that we are getting from this this and you you must have these two points otherwise you're gonna run out of mana when you channel the flurry and um then here um so this is two points here um uh, with the since we do have plus one flurry uh, from the relic uh, but even just one point in is enough so the plus one flurry is uh, not very meaningful and in the in the uh, end game planner uh, actually I um, I take this point out because because uh, we don't really need it it's basically 10% increase attack speed per point but uh, of course attack speed is very nice um, and then these points so you get adre adrenaline rush uh, buff so more damage per, per stack and also some increased attack speed per stack um, I like to go for three points, so so we have like a nice reliable chance. Uh, if you go two points, it's it's pretty hard to keep your stacks up because it's because it's uh, stacks up to four. Uh, this this buff, uh, four stacks. So so yeah, going for three points, I think it's very uh, important. Uh, you don't need more points than three though, so uh, this is good. And then the big big one for flurry also. So this actually scales up the. Uh, actual flurry uh, hit damage so we are doing damage with both the flurry and multishot uh, especially against bosses and rares so against bosses and rares so 30% more damage per stack of uh, of adrenaline rush so 120% uh, yeah, more damage all right and then now we basically have covered both of the dps skills so we are using two dps skills multishot and flurry and uh, no, no the rest of the skills are just utility skills so we are using shift of course um, uh, so uh, first we go here uh, travel points um, some healing not very meaningful but we get some some healing and um, uh, this also travel points you get some mana uh, mana back but uh, uh, the reason we go go here is because the because of the iframes so you take you take no damage while you are shifting and um, so as you as I showed before on the on the boss fight um, you can use this to, to your advantage um, uh, basically go, going through the beams and stuff uh, very nice and then uh, this is like a movement speed buff after you use shift so free movement speed for a duration and um, uh, then the cooldown recovery uh, speed so we got to get to use for, uh, shift more and uh, this is uh, really important for shift so we are also using shift for uh, for getting armor from shuriken so sh shurikens give us armor which we will uh, go through in a um, you know you know in a minute and um, so you get five shurikens when you use shift and uh, for the armor and um, uh, then also this just uh, like a the last points here so healing per point of dex basically travel points doesn't do much but uh, so this one gives us um, like a cooldown reset if um, if we go uh, under 50 percent hp in in a single hit so but but you could also use this for something else these points if you uh, if you want but um, for example this this one we can't really use because um would be basically useless since we are converting our dodge to glancing blow so this wouldn't do anything even though this is usually a very strong node to take but uh, we, we can't really take advantage of this one all right and then for shurikens uh, so we use shurikens to get armor and that's pretty much the only thing they do uh, and we get them when we use shift like i said so we don't we don't self cast sh uh, shurikens at all uh, so these travel points don't do anything uh, but uh, these ones so also travel points and um, so this is basically the, the stuff we want this uh, uh, this stuff here so shurikens are cast around us so they are in like a like a circle and um, th they also give us 30% increased armor per shuriken so we get one 150% one increased armor with five shurikens which we will have when we use shift and uh, you basically can can have this up all the time if you uh, just use it uh, used to shift on cooldown so you will have have this always the 150 percent increase and then um this this make it makes it so that the blade shield this this armor armor buff lasts longer and uh we need to get these points uh these uh, pierce points so the shurikens uh stay up even if they hit enemies so basically th these points are very important the rest of the points don't matter so these are just 
because there's nothing better to take. And then for smoke bomb, so this is another utility skill. Um, so, th so the ma main thing we have here is um, these these uh, silver shrouds we get. So this is just area and uh, frailty, and this don't matter. And um, but you get the silver shroud uh, stacks when you use sh uh, smoke bomb. So you also get one silver shroud from the passive tree, um, and then uh, then uh, silver shrouds on. Uh, on smoke bomb. So basically, silver shroud is a is a buff that allows you to uh, dodge the next hit, and it's a guaranteed dodge. So this w works even with uh, even with the dodge to glancing blow conversion. So, so very good. And then also with cleansing ailments when we uh, use smoke bomb. And then this one, uh, pretty pretty nice. So we get uh, less damage over time taken per uh, crimson shroud. Uh, uh, so we basically get get these crimson shroud buffs on. Um, on kill while we are inside the smoke cloud and stacks up to three times so pretty nice dr there for uh, for damage over time and then then i actually go for a bit of uh, health on kill you don't have to take this but uh i think they're pretty nice since there's not really anything better to take anyway on the tree and th these though we need we need to max this out for the duration so we get the maximum duration for smoke bomb and the rest of the points just getting some extra aoe for uh, for the smoke cloud and then uh, this is kind of a uh, not really useful since we we will have maximum glancing blow anyway even without this but uh, you get some extra growth speed uh, on the uh, on the uh, smoke bomb here so the basically the area uh, grows faster you could also take this one but we do have a very high slow slow chance anyway but you could uh, like drop for example one point in the area or uh, drop this point to get the slow or even the hp on kill you could drop to get the slow but basically um uh, these area points are not really meaningful, but we still take them because, uh, uh, you know, it's pretty good to have. All right, and then for the passives, so starting with the with the rogue base class tree. So these you always want to have maxed out. Um, uh, increase attack speed, very good for this build. So uh, you want to get all the attack speed that you can, that you possibly can for for this build. So as I said before, uh, flurry scales especially well with uh, with attack speed. So attack, attack speed, physical damage, very nice, and then. Uh, one point here for a travel point uh, to get this one, so 25 less damage taken while moving. Uh, very good, even though we do channel quite a bit, but we also move quite a bit. And the increased dodge rating helps us helps us to get uh, maximum glancing blow. And then these ones, haste on hit, uh, you need to have this, so uh, just free haste basically, and uh, also increased damage per increased movement speed. Very nice. And then these ones, uh, glancing blow chance, dodge rating, pretty simple stuff. Uh, you, you usually need these to cap your glancing blow unless you have a very very good uh, arrow guard but usually i always have this maxed out and then these are kind of like a, the last points you, you might take so just some decks and hp and you can even drop some some points here uh, even all of them if you want but there's uh, not really many other things we can take uh, so these are kind of the last points and then for the marksman tree uh, Again, attack speed and health on hit, you must have this one, super nice. So basically we, ha we have health on hit here and then health on crit on this one, so we will go back to this one. Uh, but yeah, always have this. And then uh, I, I go five points here for the physical damage increase crit chance, kind of. Uh, you could also just have one point, but again, not many other things I, we can take. And then uh, then the crit wound. So uh, we are still using crit wound uh, on this build, even though it is nerfed this patch, but it uh, basically helps us, uh, us to cap out the uh, crit chance. So we have about 76% uh, crit chance um, um, without crit wool, and then this brings it up to almost 100%, so very good. And uh, you don't need to have uh, like 10 points here, you don't need to have the 100% have the chance, since we, we apply ailments very very nicely, very quickly on this build, uh, because we are hitting very fast and we hit multiple times, so you could even have less points. I, I would have always have at least 5 points for the 50% chance, but I go 8 here now. Um, so you could drop some points, you know, go like five here, drop uh, drop some points here, for example, and get the concentration stuff. You know, go for like movement speed if you if you want. Even though without the cooldown, you you might not have this up that often, but that's something you could do. And um, but yeah, uh, at least uh, five points on the crit wound. So that that's that way we always basically have it capped out, and uh, this also makes it so we don't care about crit avoidance at all. So very nice for uh, like mono monolith gaming. And then these points just free crit. Crit multi. Uh, we don't need the uh, crit avoidance since we have it capped from the bow, but uh, free crit multi. And then uh, these points, also kind of like the last points you take. So um, some decks, free decks basically, more damage. And um, uh, the dot trading debuff is actually very nice for again for you know monolith gaming because 
uh, you don't really care about the dodge uh, modifier at this at this point so you you basically uh, remove the uh, dodge from uh, bosses and rares and then uh, for for this one so this is just one point to have the arrow storm uh, uh, like buff go going on so you basically have a this like arrow, arrow storm thing uh, so 10 second cooldown w w the reason we use this is to get the uh, free silver shroud stack so again um, uh, guaranteed dodge uh, for the next hit so you can kind of like um, uh, time it with the smoke bomb so first you you use the the silver shroud you get from here so it's on a long cooldown you use that one and then you use smoke bomb uh, so you get the like, kind of like the maximum guaranteed dodges so you don't overlap those because basically more more silver shroud stacks only give us more ward so so you need to uh, basically only one one point here is enough and um, then these points so these are basically free uh, plus 30 flat physical damage um, of course we we do do take a bit uh, uh, bit of a more damage you know from nearby, nearby enemies but uh, uh, this is very strong uh, free dps basically and uh, then these ones uh, so this is actually very very strong uh, points these ones so 40% uh, chance to gain uh, this like sharpshooter buff uh, we will always have this at 10 stacks because um, like I said we hit very fast and uh, we are usually quite far away also but even even if we are close to enemies uh, you know like bosses we will always, ha always have 10 stacks so at 10 stacks we have 250% uh, increased damage and that is uh, just uh, like generic bow damage so works for all damage types so 250% two, two increase and then also with these points we have 200% uh, armor shred chance. Uh, so this this makes it makes it so we don't need any, we don't need to build any armor shred on our gear. Uh, very nice and also some stun chance. So same same two hundred percent increased stun stun chance. And then uh, here just travel point. Uh, you could also get uh, have some points here if you need some mana region, uh, which can be helpful for the for the build. Even though we are channeling most of the time and you can't can't region mana while you are channeling, but uh, I I usually just have one point here. Um, and then uh, also by the way the the um, uh, bow mana cost uh, increased damage uh, thing doesn't work for uh for procked multishot so we would would get a lot of damage uh, like increased damage from this one if if it worked but it doesn't work only works for uh for directly using multishot um and then this one so plus four multishot arrows very simple free damage free aoe super nice and then uh travel point here we don't need the crit chance so just uh, one point so you get 15 percent extra increased crit and then this one super super nice so 75 crit multi at max stacks so this basically this add add to your bow mastery which is uh five percent increased attack speed per stack stacks up to five times so 25 increased attack speed and then also the 75 crit multi and 75 uh, health on crit so 75 health on crit and uh, 40 health on hit so that's that is going to be our sustain uh, which as you saw is very good because we hit very fast and then for the blade dancer points uh, so we max this out for the glancing blow dexterity and um, uh, we go five points here for the movement speed and uh, we basically we need to have seven points here to, to get to this one so that's the, the a minimum am amount so seven points uh, so some free hp the dusk shroud doesn't, doesn't do anything usually because we will have max glancing blow anyway but and then so the reason we go here is this one so we we convert the the dodge we have to glancing blow so because our dodge is very very low uh, on this build, uh, you can get maybe like uh, you know about 20% dodge at at best, even if you build into it maybe 25. So it's it's just better go go for glancing blow. Um, so with this we have the reliable uh, maximum glancing blow, so 100% chance to glancing blow, which is which is 35% uh, less damage taken. So much better than having something like 70% glancing blow and uh, and some dodge. So very like way more real reliable this way all right and then for the gear so this is going to be the baseline planner without too many legendaries though so, so uh, let's start with the bow here so this is basically the uh what, what, what gives the name to this build so this is the flight of the first bow and uh, the re main reason we use this is for the crit chance so we get plus four uh flat crit and plus five so plus nine uh flat crit critical ch strike chance and um, also some crit multi on the implicit and um, then the ancient flight buff uh, which gives us um, plus two arrows uh, with flurry and multishot so actually it, the plus two arrows is nice for flurry also even though we can't shotgun with it 
so we get some AOE with the flurry, and then uh, multi shot, of course, we get plus two arrows means more damage, and um, and more AOE. So, and then we also get 100% increased crit chance with the ancient flight, and we also get uh, max crit avoidance. So you want want to be moving after attacking uh, to get this buff, wh which we will be doing uh, basically always. So when you are channeling uh, the flurry, uh, you can do like a mini mini uh, mini step, you know, just to keep the buff up. And uh, it's actually very easy to do after you get used to it. And um, so so basically, it's kind of like a free buff, even though you you do, do need to think about uh, think about the buff while you're playing. Also, some increased movement speed on, on the bow, which is nice. And get, getting th this with LP. Uh, with uh, potential, I, it's not too hard. Uh, so 58 potential level, and um, you can get one LP pretty easy. Um, getting a attack speed on the bow is the best best stat, and uh, adds a lot of DPS. Even getting two LP, uh, not not too hard to get. And uh, then for the helmet, so this is in combination with the um, uh, bow, basically ma makes it so we can uh, get the maximum crit, uh, maximum crit chance. So. Uh, a lot of increased crit on this one, so uh, up to 290% increased crit chance, and um, also makes it so we cannot leech, wi which doesn't matter because we are using the amulet, so we w wouldn't leech anyway, and we have so much uh, health on hit, so uh, we don't care. And then some attributes, um, and y this is actually uh, pretty much the easiest um, easiest item in the game uh, to get with LP. So it is zero potential level, and um, uh, you can farm farm this from the uh, lightest arbor boss. So if you go D4 lightest arbor, 50% uh, chance to drop it. And um, of course, uh, you want to be farming D4 because of the 100 area level. So you have the maximum chance to get uh, LP. Uh, so so here here we I I put here uh, two potential with uh, plus multi shot and uh, uh, increased damage per arrow. Um, you don't need two potential, but you should have it at least one potential with, with either of the affixes if you wanna uh, have a, like a smooth smooth starting so uh, even just like a you know like a t5 uh, plus two multi shot is fine you can just gamble with the, with the um, uh, one lp helmet and uh, just like a, any exalted that you have uh, the multi shot affixes uh, crafted on and um, uh, of course in the end game you want even more lp and I getting this with four lp like i said no, not too bad uh, three lp i have many of these with uh, three lp so basically the easiest item in the game to get with LP. And yeah, then, then for the amulet, so we are using this uh, uh, Xitaras Conundrum. So uh, what this does, we have no health leech, no health, re health region, which I, like I said, don't matter anyway. And then um, we get 30% more physical damage while at full HP. So basically free damage and uh, again, uh, only 10 potential level. So one of the easiest um, items items into game to get with uh, with LP even though it's a uh, uh, uncommon item so it, but it's it's not rare this one and uh, I if you get one LP and the crit multi on it then it's uh, better than any any rare amulet even if you had like a D7 crit multi rare um, but you can also use a rare if you have a really good one like a, like a D7 crit multi and uh, uh, other good stats you know but uh, in the end game you want to go for uh, for this one uh, so this is gonna give us a lot of lot of damage, and then for the uh, uh, quiver. So we are of course using arrow guard uh, to get the glancing blow cap. So you p basically must have this if you wanna uh, wanna get the glancing blow, and um, uh, and also some armor on this one. So very strong, uh, pretty much the strongest quiver in the game, and pretty easy to get with LP again. So 40 potential level. And this is a very common item, very common item. You can just farm the uh, first timeline, which also happens to be pretty much the easiest timeline to, to farm. Uh, so you can farm, farm that, that for bows and quivers um, uh, to get, get these items. And yeah, just one LP with attack speed is already like good enough, but of course you, you can get up to three LP. Um, but yeah, attack speed on the, on the bow and quiver, so attack speed is our like highest priority. So try to get it if you can. And then for the chest, so we have um, increased damage per arrow with multi-shot. And of course the base is important here, by the way, so it's a physical physical resistance base, because um, we do need a lot of resistance, uh, because we are using uh, Morning Frost. Um, so increased damage per arrow with multi-shot, vitality for HP, uh, increased HP and HP, ba pretty basic stuff. And you can go for armor shed effect, or you can go for, uh, uh, which is kind of useless, to be honest, you can go for, uh, um, just increase armor, uh, 
yeah, because we don't really need the effect because we stacked the armor set so so high. So uh, actually, I, I should have the increase armor here. And then yeah, morning frost. Like I said, we are using morning frost for uh, uh, this. Ba basically, gives us a lot of lot of damage. So so plus one cold damage to attacks and spells. Uh, per point of deck, so I have 65 decks now on this planner, so 65 uh, uh, cold damage. So as you can see, we are we are basically uh, kind of like 60-40 split uh, between physical and uh, and cold uh, with these gears. So um, we are still mostly physical, you know, but uh, we do also do a lot of cold. Um, but this also makes it so we get need a lot of physical and cold resistance. So as you can see, I have minus 65 physical because it's uh, mi minus one res res per point of dex. So mi min minus minus physical and cold res. Uh, but, but this is add adds a lot of lot of damage. Um, about 50% more tooltip DPS on on my my character. Um, so so that gives you an idea how much uh, how much more it is. And you can also get this with LP pretty easy. Uh, so 70 potential level, but it's a very common item. Um, so you can get two LP even uh, uh, like qu quite easily. And then for the uh, gloves, so for this planner we have the engraved gauntlets, and um, you can also go for ravenous voids if you have them. Uh, but of course, keep in mind you need to get the endurance somehow. So these give uh, give us endurance, uh, dex, and uh, strength for armor, because uh, there's not really anything else to take on the prefixes. We go for uh, go for a strength, and then just hybrid HP, some big resistance, and uh, frailty uh, sealed. You definitely want to have frailty somewhere. So either frailty on the on the gloves or frailty uh, sealed on the relic. Uh, so on the relic we have, uh, right now we have plus one flur flurry, flurry sealed, uh, which is not really meaningful. Like I said, you only get uh, pretty much this 10% uh, increase attack speed. So you can just take this point out and not have the plus one flurry, which uh, we will do that in the... You will basically have to do that if you want to use Raven's, vo Raven's Void. So yeah, on the relic, uh, poison rest base uh, for the resistance. Um, if you happen to get a really good like fire rest base, you could also get that one. Then just you need to get poison rest somewhere else. But uh, so this base and crit multi dex for the damage and then resistance. And yeah, see, either sealed frailty. I mean, sealed frailty is gonna be better for um, if you wanna go for the ravenous void. So you have it already uh, there. Um, but you can also seal seal fl flurry if you happen to get it. And then um, for the rings. So ivory ring base and ruby ring base. So ba base is very important on the on the rings uh, because of the resistance we need. Uh, so dexterity, increased physical damage, and um, uh, so resistance, uh, sealed endurance. So we have almost capped endurance on this one. Um, it depends on the resistance you have, you know, these ones. So uh, the other ring is basically the same, dex, physical damage. Uh, resistance endurance so you can steal resistance if you if you uh, don't need as much because as you can see i'm very over capped on physical just to show you um, so the resistance basically depends on many things like your rolls all that, that stuff but you definitely want to have capped endurance or at least close to it and uh, uh, of course capped uh, resistance by the way we are not going for the uh, all resistance while channeling because uh, we actually do get hit a lot uh, when we are not channeling, so I, I think going for the all rest while channeling, the same for the blessing uh, armor while channeling. I think it's not very very good, at, especially for the resistance, because you do get hit a lot while it's, while you are just moving. So so that's why I go for the for the you know the usual style of just capping the rest uh, normally. And then for the belt, uh, this is basically a basic belt, uh, just armor base and um, mana region. Uh, mana region still helps us even though we channel most of the time because the mana region makes it so we can um, uh, when we move around to echoes especially we can use the uh, self-cast multi-shot more uh, kind of like defensively get the haste and uh, stun the enemies so so you definitely want to have at least this mana region you could also have mana region sealed on the on the rings or you could even have mana region on the on the amulet but you could also go for physical pens here on the amulet but you definitely want to have the crit multi but you know uh, that is an option you can do and then uh, HP, HP, physical damage, pretty basic stuff and then cleanse the ailments uh, so you must have the cleanse as always and then for the idol, so we are using throne of ambition so it gives us uh, more armor uh, per stack so this only works against um, uh, you get the buff against rares and bosses only um, but stacks up to 20 times, so um, you know 40% more armor per st uh, at, at, at max stacks, and then 40% more cold damage, which you know works works with the uh, 
with the cold damage we have so very nice and then then the multishot uh, idol so uh, increase damage per arrow super nice uh, that's a lot of damage since we have 15 percent i mean 15 arrows and then the poison resistance also super nice and then these are just going to be all for capping resistance basically these this rest of the idols uh, so hp hp bases you know uh, these large shadow idols hp and uh, res hp and res and then you can if you don't need the cold rest you could go just hp hp here um, but the basically these these uh, idols just depend depend on your resistance on your rolls you know you can drop a lot you can basically drop like two of two of these idols here and uh, get like the the stu two slot idol you know with uh, vitality and physical rest for example uh if you need it uh so these are just uh completely dependent on your other gears but basically for capping your resistance and then for the blessings so we use the void rest blessing uh you pretty much have to have this so we can't really go for like crit multi which wouldn't do much anyway because we have so much already so 75 void rest here easy cap and um uh, then the lightning rest uh, also easy cap so we uh, we we do go over the cap for lightning rest because we are using these all rest idols but uh, uh, all, all lrs idols but still uh, uh this this really nice to have uh, easy resistance and then the slow since we do, we don't need crit avoidance since we get it from the from the bow um we are going to use this uh a slow blessing o also if you happen to get um, uh, the bow with like a you know L lb bow with slow you, if you happen to get it even though it's not the best uh, thing you can get on it maybe you get get, get like attack speed and slow uh you get to drop this for like a uh, increased physical damage or even even like a even like in uh, all res but but us usually basically going for the slow is, is the best and also the chance is very high so we will always have the we will always have this uh, this damage buff up so 60 percent more damage and a uh, very nice so then the physical physical threat um we do go for physical threat even though we do um also do cold damage since you know like i said we have more physical physical damage anyway and especially when we're using the amulet uh physical damage is still going to be the the majority of the damage so so physical shred and sadly we, we can't we can't get both um cold and physical shred but yeah we go for this and then armor so if you want you could go for armor while channeling but i think that's uh uh like a worse worse way to go um so you will instead have have this armor up all the time uh so yeah, li like I said, you you do, you do get hit a lot um, when you're not channeling. I think that's actually uh, at least you get at hit at least the same amount uh, uh, when you're moving as your and as when you're channeling. So, and then for the stats, so that's pretty much the gears we have. This is like a um, kind of like a baseline planner. So you don't need to have every uh, LP item, but you should if you wanna like be re really smooth starting with this build. Um, you should have all the at least some of the LP stuff, you know, like the plus mood shot and uh, attack speed and stuff. Um, really, he really helps out. I, I started this build uh, without with o only basically this one, so I didn't have any LP on the helmet, and um, so it, it was definitely uh, struggling a bit early uh, without this. And I I wasn't using Morning Frost at that time when I first started. But uh, if you have all of these items, it is already super super nice. Uh, like smooth smooth uh, play style and everything and um uh, very nice damage and of course the blessings help a lot so so those are uh you need to get especially the shred early um and uh, by the way for leveling um so this is gonna be on you know uh, as this is an end game build um you can't level with this so you can use a leveling guide for marksman s something like the uh, puncture uh bleed stuff so you can you can find that online um definitely don't don't try to uh le level up with the mood shot that's not gonna not gonna be very enjoyable uh but yeah then just to take a look at the stats so we have uh 65 decks like i said so this is 65 flat uh cold then some vitality and um uh, that's by the way why we don't want to go for decks here on the chest we just go for, go for vitality uh, we don't need more decks uh, it's just uh, we need the hp and then you know capped resistance even over capped you can you can uh, uh you don't need this much if you have good rolls but uh, just to show you and then some some armor so 38 percent increase armor um or i mean 38 percent armor and then um of course we had the 150 percent increase from the shurikens which doesn't show up here so you have pretty nice armor and uh, on the buffs we have um the bow mastery up and sharpshooter buff at max which we, we will always have these stacks and then the ancient flight uh buff 
so as you can see we have uh, with this with this uh, up uh, so over 400 percent uh, crit multi and then 76 percent uh, crit chance and then of course the crit wound on top so 96 96 percent uh, crit chance and then if, if we have a basically the only ro role for the crit chance is the helmet so 70 percent if it's uh, like an average rolled so still 90 percent uh, crit chance with the with the crit wound so we don't need more crit chance um, definitely good to have about 90 to 100 so you don't need to hit exactly 100 especially since we hit so fast and then yeah super nice crit multi and um, very nice attack speed already even without the even without the bow having attack speed this one does have the attack speed here so uh, you can get this up uh, you know like 150 percent increase and uh, of course we have attack speed on the flurry uh, itself and um, yeah a lot of flat damage um, uh, quite a bit of increase also this does show up the uh, amulet more damage so a nice increase for uh, for both cold, cold and uh, physical since, since mo most of the increase is actually generic uh, you know from the buffs and everything uh, even though we do have a qu quite a bit of increased physical also and uh, then for the defense so with max rolls we have a um, 105 percent glancing blow chance so if you need if you can't cap your glancing blow because this basically depends on the arrow guard roll you could just take some uh, a dodge rating here for example go for the you know like i said before go for the concentration as you, you get a lot of dodge rating here so that would be a more glancing blow um, if you can't get into cap just like this and then the crit avoidance so we get we get that from the bow and then um, endurance almost capped and you, you can you can also get it capped uh, with a bit better gears all right and then we also have the planner with all the uh, legendaries and uh, like uh, like maxed gears so pretty much gonna be the same planner but now we just had um, all the LP stuff so go for the attack speed physical damage and uh, depends what you get you will also have you know chill slow uh, depending but you definitely want to have the attack speed same for this one attack speed and uh, physical damage chill so the chill is gonna help a lot uh, gonna be even more defensive with, with both uh, both slow and chill super nice and then on the helmet we have four LP with uh, with the multi multi shot affixes and then uh, HP endurance. So you actually do need the endurance here if you want to cap your endurance with Ravenous Void. So we are using Raven Ravenous Void on this one. So a lot of DR from from those, and um, that's why we are now sealing the frailty here to get the frailty. And uh, but yeah, otherwise same relic, just uh, uh, exalted crit multi. And uh, on on the amulet we have exalted uh, you know T7 crit multi fuse pen. Uh, HP and uh, uh, big resistance. So you pretty much need the resistance here if you wanna wanna use Ravenous Voice again. So these the, using these adds a lot of uh, like like mo more gear requirement if you wanna use Ravenous Void. But definitely if you if you get to this point where you, where you can use this, super nice to have. Uh, so we get a lot of DR. And then chest just uh, uh, exalted uh, damage per arrow. So uh, basically, this planner has a w way way more damage and um, than the, than the first one. Uh, uh, th this like damage per arrow affixes add, add a lot of lot of damage since we do have 15 arrows. And then then the belt is just the same uh, with, with more HP and then uh, uh, exalted decks on the rings. You could also have you know exalted exalted um, uh, resistance or excellent uh, endurance you know uh, depending uh, exalted physical damage is pretty useless but um, um th those are your options pretty much just use what you can get you know and then uh, hp and movement speed on the boots especially movement speed is super super uh, impactful because uh, uh, I, I think movement speed uh, ma makes us a lot more tankier as well because you know you, you can dodge better move move out of stuff so we have pretty nice movement speed here so 90 percent with uh, with haste and uh, yeah, cap resistance, pretty much a, a bit more, bit more dexterity, uh, even with the, even with the Ravenous Void, if you have the exalted affixes. And yeah, the, the idols, everything is the same, so not many changes, just uh, more, more DPS, more tankiness, uh, a bit better. And uh, uh, on the skills, we have 24 multi shot, so we max, max, max these points out. But pretty much the same. Otherwise, everything is the, is the same. And here we are using only one point since we have uh, just level 20 flurry, and the passives are, are, are the same. And yeah, then just to show my gears, uh, so you get an idea what I had on the gameplay. So, uh, just one LP a bow here uh, with T6 attack speed, pretty nice. Uh, but uh, I, for a long time, I had had a non-LP bow and was really fine, even for high corruption. Of course, this adds a lot of DPS, though, pretty nice. And then just attack speed on the on the quiver, uh, the dexterity. No, you shouldn't have dexterity here if you can 
if you can uh, have something better uh, but yeah i have to have it now and then just a uh, plus four multi shot um basically the same as something like a plus three and uh maybe maybe a, a d5 arrow you know some some other stats stats as well but yeah plus four multi shot pretty pretty okay and then uh the chest is um uh just basic chest uh, don't, i don't have the damage per arrow so i'm missing quite a bit of damage from the damage per arrow affixes uh especially if you think, think about if, if this was uh, like a d7 uh but yeah and then um the amulet i don't yet have the lp amulet so i'm just using this for now um grid multi and, and stuff pretty decent but of course the lp amulet will add a lot of damage so um and then then i'm missing missing armor on the on the belt and i'm missing physical damage um uh, uh, but uh yeah pretty basic belt and then just uh very bad rings so missing a lot of dexterity and uh, resistance and uh, as you can see i'm not even close to res capped so i have 45 res and 50 physical of course a bit bit more while channeling but uh um uh, yeah very uh, very bad on the resistance for now uh, just haven't got the rings and uh same for the uh relic is decent but uh, uh you really re really want to have t5 res t5 resistance on uh if you can on the on the uh items and uh, as you can see i'm missing quite a bit of damage you know from the dexterity and uh damage per arrow and uh, the amulet and stuff so you can you can push this push this more as well for the damage and uh yeah i don't have ravenous voids voids yet so i'm using these uh these gloves for now uh even though i'm i'm over capped on the endurance and uh, yeah pretty i mean ar armor is okay you know 43 i don't have the flat armor on my uh on my uh, belt uh, but yeah, and capped glancing blow. Even though this doesn't, this is by the way just a visual bug at the moment. So I'm actually 90, 95 glancing blow, and so I'm missing a bit. But uh, so yeah, that's uh, just like a visual bug. And yeah, blessings pretty decent. You know, I got all the right blessings and uh, pretty decent rolls um, on the on the blessings as well. And uh, 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 idols, I don't have the the big idols, the large idols. Um, so I'm just using these for now. And um, of course you wanna wanna cap your resistance eventually. So yeah, that's the build. Uh thanks for watching and uh if you enjoyed this video, uh don't forget to subscribe for more uh high quality last type of content and you can also find me on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv/volka_ so see you there. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh see you in the next one.